is Stacy. I'm probably totally stealing this idea from some other YouTuber, but I thought I should sit down, drink coffee, because I love coffee, and just rant about things that bother me. That was really nice. So today with this first video, uh, I thought I should talk about the GPA and the grading system. And you are probably thinking, why? It's boring. Well, school for me starts next week. And I feel like it just happened, but it happened like three weeks ago. I got done with my fourth term at the University of Oregon, so I'm a sophomore this year. And I also just got my full major um, application approved, so I'm finally not just pre-journalism, I'm actually journalism and I chose my path and that's going to be advertising. I'm super excited. Anyways, this is not a video about journalism or anything like that. I am just going to talk about the grades that I got this last term and I was really bothered by it and I'm going to compare the Russian grading system and the American grading system and you guys tell me in the comments which one you think is better or I don't, I personally don't think neither of them is good, honestly. <laughs> Anyways, let's start and I think I look really white. I'm not really sure, I can't control this light. It's super bright. Anyway, so let me start with the Russian grading system. Uh, I obviously have lots of experience with it. I have no idea how college uh, grading system works in Russia though, so I'm not an expert in that, so I'm sorry. But I can tell you all about um, the high school or, well, we don't have like high school, middle school, whatever. It's just all, all 11 years, <laughs> it's one building. Same teachers for middle and high school and elementary school is kind of different. Anyways, so middle and high school, um, I'm just going to call them secondary school because that's how we call it. Basically, the way it goes and why a lot of people think it's flawed, it's because the teachers, they don't necessarily have specific guidelines to how they grade the papers. So basically, each teacher has a different quota of errors or mistakes for whatever test they're grading. So for example, if it's um, an essay and you're making um, a grammar mistake, or um, you're you're talking nonsense or whatever. That's another mistake. Uh, so I think it's like three for some teachers, or two mistakes. That's a four. If it's one mistake, it's probably a five. If it's more than three or four, some teachers are like, yep, that's a three. And I didn't explain it before I started talking about it. Yes, we have numbers instead of letters. So A is a five, B is a four, C is a three, and so on. Uh, how the system works. So like I said, a teacher has a quota and they don't necessarily follow this whole percentage thing that American system has, which is good and it's also not good, right? It's, it's not good because a teacher kind of has this ability to fail a student and, you know, make sure they don't pass the class or whatever, which actually, I don't think that ever happens. Someone just doesn't pass the class. I think they have, to, they don't really have to repeat it. They just they just fail. That's it. Yeah, you don't you don't get a second chance. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. I think you have to repeat a whole year if you're really bad at school. Um, but yeah, that's a whole different talk. Um, we're talking about grades, and so uh, that's why a lot of Russian teachers, and I feel like I mean American teachers probably have the same thing. But in Russia, when a teacher has a favorite or a student that they just hate, uh, they can easily influence their grades, and they can show how they like them or don't like them by, you know, giving them that grade. So I was kind of a teacher's pet. I didn't really ask for that fate. It just kind of happened. I kind of hated other people calling me teacher's pet just because I was doing all the homework and teachers liked me for that. And I wasn't like late to class or I, I, I don't know, I was just doing my thing. And yeah, I was a valedictorian, by the way, <laughs> which brings me to a whole different part of this video, which actually makes me think about the grades that I just got for this term and really the reason why I'm making this video. So you basically kind of got the Russian system. Uh, it's really based on the teacher. There's some really loud car passing by right now. It's almost midnight, by the way. Well, not almost. It's 11.22, so yeah. I don't know what cars are doing outside, it's kind of late. And the final grade is determined by kind of summing up all the grades because they're all numbers and then dividing that number by the quantity of all of the grades. So for example, if a student gets, let me open up the calculator, let's say a 5 and then they get a 4 and then they get a 3, then they get another 5 and then they get another 4. So that's five grades, right? And that's 21. So we need to divide 21 by five. We get 
and that is a four. So a final grade would be a four, but a teacher can still influence that. So if they see if the student, because if you think about it, they got more fives. They got like three fives out of this, I think. And then two fours and one three, right? So technically, they're a good student, so they should be getting a five. And so the final word this way is after the teacher. They're the ones who are determining the fate of a student. And suddenly my voice started to die. I don't know why, maybe because it's kind of late right now, but yeah, that's great. In the United States, uh, so again, I'm not familiar with this because I studied at an American university. I was an exchange student in an American high school, so I kind of have some experience with it. Uh, the GPA is the grade point average, and the way it works, basically, I'm not really sure exactly how the grades are kind of counted. So in college, um, and I'm not sure if it's the same thing in high school, but the final grade is determined by, I would say, like a percentage of each of the of the task that a student had to do. So for example, the exams are 50% of the final, the homework is 30% of the final, the projects are 20%, right? And that's 100% um, total. And so this way, this is the grade is calculated, but the actual grade, so for example, if I were to do a test, um, my grade would be calculated by, my grade would be much easier calculated than in a Russian school because, for example, if I had 100 questions and I got 5 wrong, that's 95, 95, according to the American system, is an A. So, the way it goes in the United States, it's from 90 to 100, it's an A, from 80 to 89 is a B, from 70 to 79 is a C, and so on. It's good because it's really self-explanatory, the teachers don't really have to, um, kind of put much thought into it, they just see the percentage and they and they give you the grade and if you are a student, once you hear the percentage of your grade, you know which grade you got already. So you don't have to like wonder which letter grade, right? Because in Russia, each teacher has a different quota, right, of mistakes for each task. If you got 40 out of 50 right on a test, you would still be not sure which grade it is. The reason why I think the United States uh, grading system is good is because it kind of eliminates the possibility of a teacher having favorites and non-favorites and so a teacher can't really flunk a student and so if they're doing a scantron, if they're doing an essay and if they count this whole percentage and they see that it's an A they can't change it, it's an A. An A is an A, a B is a B. But it also kind of leaves out this whole personal touch and work in the classroom the, you know, the work ethic that a student is showing. And this part of this grading system gives it this kind of robotic touch. And this is why I'm ranting about it right now, is because I got not so good grades in my, um, this past term. And I, like I said, I was a valedictorian um, in high school. And back in Indiana, when I was a high school exchange student, I had a 4.0 GPA and Russia had a 4.3. I've been a good student all this time, and I just, I do my homework, I study, and, um, I memorize things if I need to. I, I gotta say though that I wouldn't put too much work into my studies usually because I just kind of naturally get it. This time though in college it doesn't really work like this. You can't just kind of get it or wing it. Um, but even even though I tried and the classes that I've been taking uh, so far were all science classes and general education requirements or gen eds because like I said I just got my full major status approved and that had to do with prerequisites and stuff like that. And so because I just got it approved, I only, this upcoming term, can take journalism classes. And so this whole time before that, I was just like, okay, I'm taking my prerequisites, but what else am I doing? And so I was doing those gen eds, which are really annoying and boring, and I honestly, I don't give a shit about them. And so yeah, I've been really upset this term, um, basically, and I'm gonna explain it to you real quick. I took four classes this term, one of which was a pass and a pass class, and it was from a scholarship. Speaking of my scholarship, the required GPA for the scholarship was 3.0. Keep that in mind. Basically, my first term ever at the U of O was last fall, and I really messed up with my G, and that was a kind of a, a shock for me when I first came here and I got my my, G, my first ever GPA in American college was 2.90 and I was just like you know what is going on like is this is this me is this how, like how does that even how because I just had a 4.3 and another thing and it's also in English and I keep taking my glasses off and putting them back on it has to do obviously with English as a foreign language it's kind of hard sometimes although 
When I say that, people are like, that's bullshit. I mean, there's no way you're having trouble with English. Well, yes, I do because it's still a foreign language. There's still lots of terminology there, especially in science classes um, that I just never learned. And it's, it kind of comes off as a kind of a surprise when you're in a lecture hall and you're sitting there and you're trying to figure this out and you're also trying to copy everything from the slides and it's just a word that you don't even know how to spell. You have to like copy each letter. Anyways, what I was talking about is my first term at the U of O, I had 2.90. It's It kind of has to do with me messing up one class because uh, I ended up getting a B plus, but I didn't know. It was because the professor put a huge curve on it and I ended up switching to pass no pass, which gives you zero GPA hours. And so that's why my GPA went kind of low. It just kind of been hard to get back up because Cumulative GPA is all of the GPA together, so for each semester or for each term, for your whole college career, and so it kind of counts each term, and so when you have this rough start, like I did, your next terms, you have to be better and make the whole GPA better, you kind of have to um, clean up after you messed up the first time. So that was my rough start at the U of O, and my second term I got a 3.25, then I messed up and I got a 3.0 spring term, and so this fall term of 2015 rolled in and I had a 3.0 and I was like, okay, you gotta do it, you gotta get it, you gotta get those good grades because now I have the scholarship and you have to keep up that GPA, 3.0, which I was, I was right on the edge. This term, my term GPA was 2.63, and I, I I cannot believe that I'm talking about myself right now. It's 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 crazy. Okay, I, it's 2.63. God, and I it's not like I didn't try. I mean, it's hard to balance making videos, working, which my work is also making videos and illustrating social life and studying, and also now that I live in my own apartment, I have to cook for myself and I have to do grocery shopping and cleaning and I potentially have OCD but I'm not really sure. I've taken a lot of tests and they all say that I might. Anyways, I clean a lot and so that takes a lot of time. So it's kind of hard. I feel like I just got defensive about this. Well, I do have to admit that yes, I could have done better in all of those exams. Regardless of that though, my GPA could have been exactly 3.0 or at least like a 2.9 something just for this term and then the cumulative would have been a little bit better. Now my cumulative is uh, 2.92, which is crazy because to get into the J school or to get your full major status approved, you need a 2.90, so it was 0 0.02 saved me, saved my life basically. So the percentages for the grades that I got this term are not that bad. So I got a, a pass for my pass and a pass class, which is always zero GBA hours. And then I got a C plus, a C plus, and a B plus. Now, the percentages for those grades are 78%, 79%, and 89.64. I cannot even begin, and, and this is the this is the rant, okay? I'm, I'm actually mad about this, and I still am, because the this end of the term left me with this feeling like I'm not good enough, 3.36% not good enough for the 3.0 GPA. And I can't believe I'm fighting for 3.0 GPA. Once again, this is crazy because all my life I've been a straight A student. The professors were not willing to negotiate this at all. And I've been talking to each one of them. So one is a women in politics professor, it's a political science class. And uh, I got 78%, just 2% away. I was hoping the professor would put on a curve and my grade would be a little bit higher, so I'll get that B minus. So I've been emailing her and I was like, hey, you know, I'm just 2% away from the next letter grade. Could you please help me out maybe? And she didn't really do anything. She's like, okay, so a C is a C. It's from 70 to 79. So you got your C. I was like, all right, this is, this is great. That was the first grade that was released. So I was like, all right, let's just hope for psychology that it's a B and let's hope for the writing class that I was taking, which is my last prerequisite for journalism, let's just hope that that's an A, because that would have saved my GPA, right? Well, my psychology professor did not put any curve on, which is crazy, because usually, in my experience with those huge science classes of like 500 people, the professor would put a little curve on, maybe a 1% or 2% to make everyone's grades a little bit higher, make everyone a little bit happier, 
Especially when it's the end of fall term. It's Christmas, okay? Just come on. Anyway, the professor didn't do anything. I was 1% away. He was not willing to negotiate either. He also told me that C is from 70 to 79 and you got your C. I was like, damn it. Okay, that's great because at this point, my GPA was not salvageable. I already knew that I will be kind of failing in the scholarship standards and actually I have already scheduled a meeting with my scholarship coordinator because I only get one warning. If I get, if this happens again, they're literally gonna deport me back to Russia because this scholarship counts as my financial sponsor in the US. And if I don't have that sponsor, then I'm out. This is really stupid because this first warning happened literally because of these professors who are not willing to negotiate this at all. And I'm mad because my whole life, when I was in Russia, the teachers were willing to make your grade a little bit higher or they would lower it if they would see that you're actually not really trying hard. And that happened to me too, a couple times. In Russian language and literature, my teacher, in English by the way, my mom <laughs> was my teacher, she would lower my grade a little bit to make me try harder. And same went with my literature and Russian language teacher. Here in the US, the professors don't do that. I don't, I feel like they don't really care. Or maybe they, I don't know. But this way of system just kind of gives me that feeling that they don't really they don't care, they don't give a shit about what the students are getting. And the last one, and it's the most upsetting one because it's a writing class and it's the one I actually kind of care about. I kind of like writing. I'm a journalism student. I'm actually not that bad at it. I can be creative and I did get creative and she loved my essay and she kept telling me about it because my last essay was an autoethnographic text about being an international student in America between Russia and the US and the kind of tensions that go within an international student's head and I'm probably going to publish it online and it's an ethnographic text like I said so there's some Russian in it and I kind of integrated it together so it was 3,000 words. Keep in mind once again I'm an international student and English is not my first language so for me to write 3,000 word essays and get A's for them I mean it feels cool for me it's kind of an achievement. When a professor is look a writing professor <laughs> is looking at a student like this and they see that they got a final grade is 89.64 and they still don't give me a fucking A. I mean, I don't know what to say to that because it's it literally 0.36%. God damn it. And so, um, yeah, basically, and I understand the grades are not going to matter once I have to apply for jobs and stuff like that. But it does matter to me because it's kind of like my personal assessment. And when I get these kind of grades and this kind of, um, I don't know, the, the way that the professors are interacting with me and they're not willing to talk about it or help me out, it just kind of makes me feel sad. And um, winter term is about to start in a couple of days. I'm super excited because I'm taking journalism classes. But regardless, I'm still mad and this kind of uh, feeling is going to be forever in my head. And I would probably know better to study harder for my exams. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what I should talk about next in my coffee talk. I have a couple of topics in mind, but I need your help. And you can suggest anything. It could be a controversial kind of topic. It can be you may be asking for my opinion, or I can just rant about something. Also in the comments, let me know what you think about the grading systems and which one is better, which one is worse. I honestly don't think neither of them is good. And I explained why, because in Russia you can have favorites and not favorites and in the United States you can't, like a teacher is kind of trapped and they can't really do anything about it and they're just kind of like robots. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm gonna keep drinking my coffee although it is midnight right now. I should go to bed. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and follow me on social media. Everything is in the description box. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, and see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye!